Hello and welcome to lesson 45 of the Learning Guitar series. In this lesson we're going to discuss how we can use minor pentatonics and of course the relative major pentatonics over dominant seven chords and in doing so we're going to discuss for the first time also the concept of alterations. Before I proceed I would like to thank all the patrons who are supporting this project uh, online as uh, you're making this possible and uh, so I thank you very much um, for, for the support and the, the appreciation. So before we discuss dominant seven chords and how we can use minor pentatonics over them, it's good to introduce the concept of alterations. We know what embellishments are and uh, tackling dominant seven chords, of course, our reference point is uh, scalic wise, it's a mixolydian scale. So say for uh, G7, our reference scale, you know, would be G mixolydian. Of course, five shapes. You know, you know all that. I don't have to explain. Now let's and um, we know that in terms of scale is one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, eight. And if we look at it uh, as an arpeggio. Uh, we're looking at 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, flat 7, 9, 11, and 13. Uh, if we look at it on a chart, as you can see, the, our reference is a mixolydian scale, which works over dominant 7 chords, and same vertical structure, 9, 11, and 13 are the embellishments. So what do we mean for alterations? Well, alterations are all those notes that actually don't belong to the scale. Um, this is as in uh, layman terms, as much as in, as in layman terms I can put it. So do alterations only apply to dominant seven chords? No, absolutely not. We know in the cases of the scales we're studying, there are you know, major modes. We're dealing with the scales that have seven notes. But we also know that actual notes from like from octave to octave are twelve, which means for every scale that is you know more often than not seven notes and five alterations, so notes that don't belong to the scale. In this case, we're going to look at what's going on uh, in terms of alterating a mixolydian chord, mixolydian scale, and um, the reason you'll find more often than not that alterations are applied to dominant seven chords and by the way let's not make a general rule out of that it depends on the kind of music obviously but let's say you know uh, it's kind of common to do that and the reason being that tension resolution that's that's uh, as usual we go back to the same kind of concept um, alterations create even more tension than already we have when we go, say, from 5 to 1, from chord number 5. In this case, G7, so I'm diatonic to the key of C. Here is our tension, here is our resolution. Okay? So, and not only there is tensions already because we are doing like a 5 to 1, we can use alterations to add further tension. This is a very common practice if you think of uh, jazz, fusion, some degree, soul, and to be honest with you, also Jimi Hendrix to a certain extent. And actually, you're alterating most of the time, I guess, every time you're playing the blues. And, and, and we'll look at it in a second. So let's look at what I mean by alterations and the names we give to these extra notes so that we, you know, we kind of speak a common language. So if we look at a diagram, I'm going to write down uh, a mixolydian scale. So let's make this a root note, okay? Uh, and here we go. I'm just going to write one octave. There's no point in writing two in this case. And let's delete this. And as I said, we're using our uh, as a reference point G in this case. Okay. Now, if we look at the mixolydian scale, I'm going to use a clear dot to show you the alterations because obviously this note is not there, this note is not there, this note is not there, 
this node is not there and this node is not there. And it's like flat 2, flat 3, flat 5, flat 6, and major 7. And these are nodes that in other scales, say if, it, if this was, let me write the Dorian down here for a second. This is um, G Dorian, okay? When it comes to G Dorian, we call this node a flat 3. And we call this node a flat 3 because this is what gives us minor, okay? We tend to, you know, when we think of uh, when we think of family of chords, of course we think one flat three five and flat three is what gives us minor, and in the same way that one three five gives us major, and one three five flat seven gives us dominant seven. But in the context of alteration, actually these notes take a different name. So the flat three, we're actually going to be calling it the sharp nine. The flat 2, well, we're going to be calling it a flat 9. The flat 5, we keep it as a flat 5. And the flat 6, we're going to call it a sharp 5. Major 7 station in general. Of course, this, you could call this a flat 5, a sharp 4. But as I said, in the context of alterations, you'll notice that more often than not, you'll find chords, say, G7 flat 9, or G7 sharp 5, or G7 flat 5. G7 sharp 9, and all combination of, of uh, these things. In layman terms, when you think sharp 9, you're basically adding a, a flat 3 to a, to a chord. So, just to make you, like, give you a visual example, uh, let's take a G7 and let's add a, a sharp 9, and a sharp 9 and a, flat five, and a flat 3 are the same note. So, I'm looking to add a B flat to my chord. I can add it here. So, I have this kind of sound. And in fact, you can hear it already you know, if you're not used to this kind of sound. But on its own, even if you find it kind of dissonant, and the reason you find it dissonant is because of the, uh, the alteration of Alec, check out how it resolves. Nice. Let me add a sharp five. Let me add a sharp 5 and a flat 9. A flat 9 is basically the flat 2, so for G it would be A flat. I'm adding it on the upper octave. I'm still using G7 and I'm adding flat 9, right? A sharp 5 and a 9, so both an embellishment and an alteration. And of course, I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with what sometimes they call the Jimi Hendrix chord. I mean, something I've been used many, many years before Jimi Hendrix, but you know, maybe not in that matter. You know, it's your E7 sharp 9. This is basically E7, root note, third, flat 7, and an alt one alteration, the sharp 9. And again, sharp 9 and flat 3 is the same note, so in the key of E. Now, so like in E, the flat 3 is G, so I'm still, I'm just adding a G note. And I played A, a major straight after it, because E7 is a chord number 5 for A, so that's well, kind of wants to resolve. See? So, at the end of the day, so the concept of alteration is basically referring to adding notes that don't belong to the scale that, in theory, we're supposed to be using, okay? So for Mixolydian, now suddenly not only we have embellishments, which are the second, which is also the nine, the fourth, which is also the eleven, and the fifth, sorry, and the sixth, which is also the thirteen. We also have alteration, flat nine, flat five, sharp five, sharp nine, and major seven. Now, as I said before, a major 7 as an alteration is more often than not, I mean, again, I don't want to say, oh, it's, it's room, don't do it, but it's more often not just used as a chromatic thing. Let me, let me show you what I mean. So this is G, I'm just going to put a drone. This is Mixolydian. If I play a major 7, now this sounds major. 
So, as a chromatic motion, check this out. See? That's your major seven. It, it is used, more often than not, you'll find it is kind of a, a chromatic passage. So, as you're going from the root note, maybe to the flat seven. And the reason why we might not stay on it like we might do with the other alterations, is because it gives a sense of a major feel when actually we're trying to create tension, which will resolve into something either major or minor. Uh, so a bit like we said for the other uh, pentatonics and how we devised them, how we're going to use them, we said for major we only used pentatonics which didn't create any alteration. Uh, as a matter of fact, now that you understand the concept of alteration, if I take an Ionian scale, and as I said before to you, like don't make the mistake to think an alteration only applies to dominant seven chords. I mean, this is an Ionian scale. If I was playing a chord number one and I'm using the scale over it, of course, these are alterations. These notes here, okay? Flat three, sharp five, okay? And Depending on the style of music, you can always use them. Uh, as I mentioned, the idea sometimes is the chord, a major chord like chord number one or chord number four, they they function as a resolution point. But nevertheless, say this is a major chord. I mean, this is Ionian. I'm playing C major, but nothing takes away that I can use alterated notes, which are. See how weird they sound, right? Those are, you know, kind of heavy. <laughs> but with a bit of, you know, musicality and, and, and chromatic motions. See, they happen. They all happened, they were in there. It's, I was weaving in and out of it, and you know, some chromatic passages. But you know, don't worry, like, if, if this is not, you know, this is not yet what we're practicing, obviously. But the entire point is that you understand that when we say alteration, we're not just thinking immediately, and depending on the chord and depending on which mode you're using, which scale you're using, well, mixolydian would be the correct scale for a dominant seven chord. The number of mixolydian are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, flat 7, 8. So the notes that are missing from this scale, they are alterations. Okay? Uh, if it was Dorian, the scale is 1, 2, flat 3, 4, 5, 6, flat 7 root note. Well, the notes missing are the alterations. When we studied pentatonic applied to major, we, in, at this stage we, we avoided any alteration. And we ended up with three pentatonic scales, minor pentatonic, that we could use. That gave us just other embellishments, and in one case it gave us the sharp four, and so it gave us a lydian. So, say for example, for C major, we say that we could use A minor pentatonic over it, we could use um, E minor pentatonic over it, and we could use B minor pentatonic, and gave, we get different kind of embellishments. So, That's A minor pentatonic. This is E minor. And we say B, so a semitone down from it, will give us a, a lydian feel. Now, uh, when we did uh, minor pentatonic, we steered away from anything that contained a major three. For the same reason now we're saying from a mixolydian point of view, we might steer away from something that contains a major seven. So, because the major three really gives us a major feel and we're playing minor chord. So we steered away from it and we kind of accepted uh, uh, pretty much uh, almost everything else, almost. Uh, at this stage, we might steer the way still from, uh, steer, steer the way still from the major seven when we did minor because we haven't done melodic modern and harmonic modern modes yet. We will in the future, though. 
so we came up with uh, three, four pentatonics. We can use minor pentatonics over a minor chord. So I don't know, let's say uh, D minor. And we said we could use obviously D minor pentatonic. We also said we could use up a fifth from it, so A minor pentatonic. And we also say that we could play a tone up from it, so E minor pentatonic. And you know, and as you can hear, they all work, and we didn't add pretty much any alteration. We was again in this case we're embellishing region. Uh, sorry, we're embellishing Dorian. <laughs> Uh, and of course, other pentatonics, as we've seen, we, they, we, they can be used to embellish uh, Phrygian or to embellish uh, Aeolian chords, and it, it all depends on which mode you're applying them to. I know this is a long recap, but it's kind of important because now in the case of Dominant 7, uh, as you'll see, because we're adding alterations, there are many more pentatonics we can use. Uh, but with a little bit of practice and you know just getting accustomed to understanding the concept in a way uh, you'll be able to use them and get a lot of different sounds you know and cover a lot of different styles too uh, in the past in the i mean the past in the, in the last two lessons if you remember the methodology i literally went this is my reference in this case is a dominant seven chord and i went through pentatonic 12 keys just to show you the intervals and given certain intervals why we couldn't apply it okay now since i did this long introduction i will avoid writing pentatonics say from the point of view of g 12 keys of pentatonic check all the intervals and see okay can i use it or not uh, by now you understood the concept you know you can even try and do it yourself just to keep the lesson not too long because as i said there is still a lot to talk about so I'm kind of going to give you already the results and out of 12 keys, so 12 possible, possible minor pentatonics, we're going to be using seven. So there is seven pentatonics that we can use over a simple dominant seven chord. In this case, we're going to use G as a reference. And we're going to subdivide them. We're not going to subdivide them into the ones that don't contain alterations. So the non-alterated uh, pentatonics, but the pentatonics are not alterated, but like the, there is three pentatonics we can use over G7, and as you will see, the intervals they generate, they are other chord tones or their embellishments. And so there's three pentatonics on one side, and there is four pentatonics instead that contains alterations. None of them contains major seven, for the reason I explained to you before. So let's start with the three pentatonics that do not contain uh, alterations. So the first one, let me delete this. The first one is D minor pentatonic. So up a fifth from the chord in question. The chord in question in this case is G. And if you look at the intervals that you're generating with D minor pentatonic, I'm writing it to octaves, but you have a second. And again, let's, let's see this as uh, an embellishment, okay? As an embellishment here, I got the 11 and then I have chord tones. So I have a root note, I have a fifth, and I have a flat seven. So obviously we're not we're not alterating. Now in practicing this particular progression, uh, this, sorry, this particular, you know, concept, uh, what you want to loop uh, is a 5 to 1 progression. So you want to hear the dominant 7 chord resolving into something. So you, if you don't know what, what I mean when I say 5 to 1, you might want to have a look. I think it was lesson 16 or 17, which was the introduction to harmony and theory. And there is a chart you can download and use it as a reference. But, you know, if you think of major modes and diatonic scales, chord number 5, when you harmonize the major scale, chord number 5, say in the key of C, the one we are using now, is G7. So G7 is chord number five, and C major will be chord number one. Uh, I'm gonna upload for uh, the, the advanced supporters on Patreon uh, in, the next, in the coming days, I will, I will upload 
uh, a backing track, a 5 to 1. Because I don't remember if I put that already there. If it's not, I will upload it. But if it's already there, great. Um, so 5 to 1 in 12 keys. Um, so that when you're practicing, you know, this particular kind of uh, sounds, uh, you don't get stuck in one single C key and you can visualize it with a bit of practice, you know, every single key you can. Anyway, so let's say we have C major, sorry, G7, into C major. Let's do it a little bit more funky. So we say that we're going to do D minor from G7, and then we're going to go into C. Now, hold on, let me stop this for a second. Now that's when things go interesting. Actually, let me show you what I mean. Let me show it to you on here. Let's say, I'm just going to write it here. What we're doing is a five, oops, it's a five, two, one. Okay, in this case, we're using G7 going into C major, as easy as that. Now, in this first example, we're using D minor pentatonic, okay, as a scale, what we're going to use to improvise, to play. Now, for C major, remember, I mean, we just mentioned it, I can use A minor pentatonic, I can use E minor pentatonic, and I can use B minor pentatonic, and this will give us median. Okay? So, guess what? For G7, I'm going to be playing D minor pentatonic, and maybe I'm going to go just a tone up and play E minor pentatonic when it's C is coming, or I'm just going to go to A minor pentatonic. So in other words, I'm dealing with this, D minor, B minor pentatonic. If I want to stay in the same area, C minor. It makes sense. Actually, um, while I was doing it, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to use the same shape. So, you know, D and E. So, you, when you see my hand moving, you know that I'm changing the pentatonic as opposed to maybe stay in the same area and, you know, you might not realize which pentatonic I'm using at which point. So, I'm going to actually, just in this case, I'm going to use this method so you see me switching pentatonic as the chord change. Um, Let's, let's move on. The next pentatonic I can use is a tone up from it, and that's A minor. Of course, I'm, I'm writing two octaves, I could, I could write just one, but... And as you can see, again, I'm not alterating what I'm having. I'm having chord tones, which is the root note and the fifth, and <clears throat> I'm also having embellishment, a nine, eleven, the sixth, let's rename it thirteen, so you, you see what I mean by uh, having a, a banishment, right? So you have 9, 11, 13, root note, and the fifth. And if we look at our chart here, now if I write here A minor pentatonic, guess what? I can just go A minor pentatonic into A minor pentatonic, and I'm just resolving the entire progression, which... It's kind of comfortable, maybe it's pop music, right? As you might have noticed, in this case, I'm also using the so-called blue note, like the flat five, you know, 
but if you're done pentatonic slicing, as I say, you didn't play the blues. And I'm using that because I'm actually... I'm actually thinking blues kind of pentatonic playing in this case. So as you can see, just like a single pentatonic is resolving both chords, which allows us, you know, in, in a way, sometimes it's comfortable that we can use a single scale uh, to play the entire progression, but, which happens very often in pop music. Uh, because then we can really focus on listening to what's going on in the track and, you know, uh, on the musicality of what we're playing rather than the technicality of what we're playing. Let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, the third pentatonic we can use is E minor. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed, from the root note, from so G7, we went up a fifth, then up a fifth from this note, and then up a fifth again. And then, you know, this kind of thinking of it in terms of moving things up a fifth, which we already seen happening when we did minor and uh, major chords applied and pentatonics applied to them, keep uh, is a recurring theme, as you can see. If I use E minor pentatonic, now I have root note, third and fifth, all very good, all chord tones, you know, root note, third and fifth, and a couple of embellishments, thirteens and nines, okay? Let's see what happens here, because again, this is, hopefully you're starting to understand what's going on here. So I can play E minor pentatonic, and I can stay in the minor pentatonic because that works also for C, okay? And again, I'm gonna get some, some, probably some degree of bluesy sound out of this one too, okay? Let's see. bluesy sound, less bluesy than when we used A minor pentatonic. We have a little bit more colors, especially when it comes to the major chord, but that's interesting. So now, like, again, I can, I can resolve the entire progression just by using one scale. We're using, or I can combine them. I can go E minor, A, E minor pentatonic, A minor pentatonic, back and forth, and get different colors out of this. It's a very simple progression, right? Uh, now, can, can I use two different pentatonics instead of like trying to stay on one? Of course you can. Let's say, for example, let's look at it on paper first. I can go from A minor pentatonic and then move up a tone into B minor pentatonic and get a lydium kind of feel. Or I can go from E minor then to B minor and get a lydium kind of feel. I can go from any point to any point. I can even play more than one depending, depending on how many bars of G7 you have, you can even play all of them, you know, <laughs> it's not that you have to choose one. So for G7, I can mix and match, that's E, that's uh, A, you know, that's D. Now I'm mixing them up, I'm not even, you know, like this was D minor, that's A minor, that's E minor. Let's go from one to another. So for G7, I'm going to play you A minor pentatonic, so you'll see me in this area. And as I said, like, I'm just going to move the shape so that you can clearly see what's going on. When it comes to C, I'm going to play B minor.
put it away and play the E minor instead at some point. But in this will be... And that's B. So as you can see, any combination into any combination. And in, in the future lesson, I'll show you even further more tricks you can use and kind of simplify your life in, in a way that you have a chord progression and we map it out with minor pentatonics and we look at this connection where maybe you can use the same scale across several chords. And as I said, in pop music, this is very common because a lot of pop music tunes are diatonic chord wise which means all the chords of the song belong anyway to one single key, which allows us to resolve, you know, basically using one pentatonic over it. Uh, although there is still a few tricks we can use in that case too, and blues it up, that's how I like to call it. Now, let's have a look at the pentatonics that creates alterations instead. So in discussing pentatonics which alterate the dominant seven chord, so I'm gonna go in degree of how many alterations they create. So we have four pentatonic scales, which we can use over dominant seven chord. And one of them has got one alteration, one of them has got two alterations in it, and another one has got three alterations, another one has got four alterations. And I'm just gonna go in order, okay? So the first one we're gonna look at is for G7, we're gonna use a G minor pentatonic. Now, if you look at it this way, of course, flat three makes you think, okay, minor chord. That's why I'm gonna change now this. I'm gonna change the name and call it sharp nine, okay? So now you can see, okay, I have root note, fifth, 11, which is still a kind of an embellishment, flat seven, which tells me I can use it over a dominant seven chord, and here is my alteration, okay? And basically we are using G minor pentatonic over G7. You've done this millions of times. Every time you're playing the blues, you're playing a dominant seven chord and, you know, playing a pentatonic over it from, you know, in the same key. So G7, G minor pentatonic. Uh, so let me write it in, in our little spreadsheet. I'm gonna put here the, the altered one. So here, one alteration. So in this case, I might go G minor pentatonic, A minor pentatonic. If anything, what I want you to hear is a very common, uh, is a very common trick. As we said, we can play that progression just using A minor pentatonic, and that's resolving five to one easily. Let's give it a blues feel. So I'm going to start using A minor on both the chords and from time to time you'll see me going back a tone so that you visually see that I'm doing it. And over G7 I'll use G minor pentatonic and you'll notice straight away how that creates a tension, a very bluesy type of tension, which I can then resolve back into A minor when the C major chord comes. Check this out. So as you can see, G minor can easily give us, you know, a little bit of tension, very kind of bluesy, bluesy kind of tension, okay? Um, of course, you know, you can use it in a less bluesy manner, and uh, as I said, you can, you can even combine. So what I was doing sometimes before was actually going A minor pentatonic first for like, you know, maybe for a bit or two, adding G minor, and then go back to A minor. 
as I said, you can always mix and match and go in and out. The second pentatonic we can use is C minor. So I'm going up a fourth point. So this is C minor pentatonic. Now I'm going to change the name of this into sharp five, which is kind of more common. In this case, root note, again, flat seven is in there. The 11 is in there, so you have some embellishment, but you also have two alterations, a sharp 9 and a sharp 5, okay? If I was to look at it from a chord point of view, like sharp 5, sharp 9, you have this kind of sound. But in this case, we're alterating. So if the chord is alterated and I'm alterating too, in a way, we're not alterating. <laughs> we'll talk about this in the future too, but, you know, one thing at a time. Uh, we're going to still use like big G7, but this time we're using C minor as a pentatonic. Again, same trick as before, I can use C minor over G, and then of course it's, you know, resolving into C major, so I'm going literally C minor, C major, in terms of pentatonics, which if I use only minor pentatonics, then it's going to be C minor into A minor, okay? But... If we look at our spreadsheet and we write C minor pentatonic, you can see now that, you know, I could go C minor to A minor, you know, kind of nice. C minor into E minor. And if I go a semitone down from it, I'll get the Lydian. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you buff the options. So I'm gonna go C minor. So like pentatonic, I'm using this one so you have a visual reference, right? The guy we all know, right? Into A minor for the C major chord. And sometimes you'll just see me do this. When I wanna hear you kind of leading kind of resolution. Again, that's C minor over G7 in pop music all the time, whenever you wanna blues it up. Okay, it's very, very common. You'll hear it, I'm gonna literally make it way obvious, okay? So, as you noticed, at some point, you know, very bluesy. I was resolving it in the shape of A minor, which is a ear, actually, because it felt more musical than, you know, just going up and down. And that's the reason we do five shapes, by the way. You know, this sometimes makes no sense, as opposed to... Because this is A minor pentatonic, here. I mean, that area, so, you know. When we went Lydian, I'm sure you heard suddenly some more, let's call them jazz tones, but you know, something which is definitely taking a different direction compared to pop music, right? So we were going like... And you know, if you are into those kind of sounds, that's what you want to use. Another way you can use this kind of stuff is to weave in and out of it. So I can start, you know, G7 into C major, I can start it with the A minor pentatonic. So for G7, I'm still being, you know, just embellished. Then quickly go out of it. So I'm gonna go A minor pentatonic, C minor pentatonic, and then back into A minor because I'm playing C major. So instead of being an entire bar, the entire G7 being altered, I'm I altered half of it. So the first half of G7 is gonna be just normal. 
then altered, then back to C major. I hope I'm not confusing you, but you'll, you'll hear it. So that's what I mean from weaving in and out of it. So you use A minor, pentatonic every time you want to kind of resolve, or even when you're on dominant seven chord, now you can see that A minor feels a little bit more cheesy compared to when I use C minor, if I use the G minor. Now we're gonna add three alterations. So the more we add alteration, the more we're steering away from pop and move into more jazz infusion territory, obviously. So in this case, we're gonna go a tone down, from G, and we're going to play F minor pentatonic, okay? I'm just going to write the first octave. And instead of calling this, so let's call it a flat 9. We're going to have it up here anyway, as you can see. Flat 9, sharp 9. Now, as you can see, we have a you know a root note, and the rest is, beside the flat 7 and 11, you have flat 9, sharp 5, sharp 9. and now I can delete this in a way, because the root note is actually not in there. So we have, um, you know, like embellishment and upper structure, flat seven on the dominant seven chord, and the rest is alterations. Uh, this is kind of like a little bit easier maybe to remember sometimes because, you know, it's simply literally a tone down from, from whatever the chord. So G7, F minor pentatonic. Uh, E7, D minor pentatonic. And if we look at it, in our little chart here, we'll put it here. So these are the altered versions. Don't forget that. Huh? Oh, F minor pentatonic. In this case, just to give you a demonstration, I'm going to go from F minor pentatonic to E minor pentatonic because you know, it's close by. I'm just going to semitone down. And sometimes I'm going to use the trick I used before, where I'm going to play E minor pentatonic first over G7, then weave out bring some alterations into play, and then go back in, okay? So, uh, let's say I'm going to do it up here. I mean, it doesn't matter to me, but, you know, maybe if, 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 it, if it helps that I use, you know, probably the shapes that you know better, or anyway, you can see just this motion, but even here it would be the same, you know. So you should know five shapes. That's what I'm, all I'm saying. Uh, so, let's have a look. As you can see, like the first part of what I was doing, I was literally staying the entire length of G7, I was staying in F minor. And of course, because of the alterations, that's hard to digest as a sound then, because it's alterating, so it's creating even more tension. It's in the second part, what I was doing, I was starting from E minor, and so the G7 was not always alterated. I was putting the tension, the strongest tension, so the tone down, just before going to C. 
And because obviously the amount of time I was alterating was half compared to before, it in a way gets a little bit more musical, at least to my ears. I'm not saying like, you know, I can alterate the chord for 20 minutes, but, you know, creates a lot of tension, but maybe musically I don't find it compelling. And some other people instead will be the opposite. It's like, oh, I love this, you know. So in my case, I rather personally, I like to kind of alterate just before. So not having maybe an entire bar of it, but half of it. I like the sound of it. You understand what I'm what I mean by by all this, but nevertheless, if it's not clear, all I'm doing is like I'm going in this case E minor, then F minor, maybe like you know if this was four bits, I'm playing my F minor kind of here, and then resolving it to E minor in this case most of the time, just because it's like a semitone below makes my life a little bit easier. The last one I'm going to write it here first, so you can see it straight away. is actually B flat minor pentatonic, so it's going to be up a third, I up minor third on this chord. And when I do the example, more likely I'm going to go B flat minor pentatonic into A minor. Again, it's a semitone away. Or a semitone up and I'll find myself into Lydian. Let's look at what's going on from uh, the perspective of uh, the chart. Let's place our root note. And if I go up a flat three, so like in this case it would be B flat. And if you look at the pentatonic, now I literally have four alterations. Sorry, this note is wrong. It's here. I have the flat seven, which still belongs to Mixolydian. Here we go. And the rest is just the alteration. Sharp nine, sharp four, let's call this a flat five. <coughs> sharp five, flat nine, sharp nine. Basically all the alterations plus the flat seven. Lastly, last probably a couple couple of phrases. I was actually going into B into Lydian, which kind of was suggesting another trick I could use here. And I thought, okay, let me stop, explain it, and then do it. For G7, I can start in A minor pentatonic, half the length of G7, alterate it to B flat, and I'm still in G7, and then going into B when the C comes, and now I'm in Lydian. Okay? So you have this kind of happening. I'll show you what I mean.
I hope it makes sense. So as you can see, you know, when, when you look at it on paper in particular, if you put like any progression on paper and you start seeing, okay, what can pentatonics I can use? And you literally map it out a bit like I did here. But we'll, we, now you can see connection and things that can move up in semitones or like in tones. And of course you can use any combination of this, you know, if this G7 was lasting for like a minute and a half, then, you know, you don't have to stick to one single pentatonic, you can mix and match. So, I hope it's kind of clear what I'm doing here. And uh, in the next lesson, I'm going to show you again a few tricks you can apply to more complex chord progressions, not just, uh, you know, not just a five to one. But the reason we're doing five to one is because so you can practice the tension, so the seven pentatonics you can use over G7 and then resolving it. So you have a moment of, okay, tension, resolution, tension, resolution. When it comes to C, you don't have to phrase on it. Even if you just played one note, that would be enough for as long as you resolve into whatever pentatonic you're using for C. Or you could even resolve into a chord tone, you know. Let's say D minor going into, you know, into C. That's enough. resolving it. Let's say C minor into C major. The important is that you get the transition. Okay, I want to hear what D minor, pentatonic, you know, all the seven pentatonics go in the, going into the major. Each of them will have a different vibe because you're having, you know, other embellishment if you use the three which embellish, <coughs> or four pentatonics which bring alterations. Now, um, we're probably going to still spend the next lesson to see further applications. We're not going to, you know, <coughs> necessarily going into other family chords yet already major, minor, and dominant seven chords, and now we can move pentatonics around to, you know, get all sorts of colors out of these chords and out of, out of our soling. It's already like, you know, uh, quite a lot. But as I said, we're going to use a few more, you know, uh, complex progression and see how we can simplify them or, you know, take some, you know, diatonic chord progressions, you know, pop songs, and still see how we can uh, we can uh, simplify them, you know, and see what kind of sounds we can get out of just using like you know a minor pentatonic, you know. Uh, I hope uh, the lesson was interesting enough. Uh, it's quite this it was quite uh, demanding because there is a lot to talk about, and so if you have any questions, you know, I, I just came to the surface in terms of alterations and stuff like that. There is so much more we can discuss in the future, but nevertheless, hopefully if things are clear enough. And if they're not, if you feel confused, just, you know, feel free to pop a question. As always, I want to thank the people supporting this project on Patreon. Uh, you're making this project, at this stage, you're making this project possible. And um, so if you have any question, obviously, like, you know, send me a message on Patreon, I'll be happy to reply. And for everybody else, I hope you, you know, I hope your guitar playing is improving. Consider supporting the project if you can. And, uh, well, until next time, uh, enjoy playing.